Senior Pierce. I'm a senior at Jamestown High School, though that should go without saying, but anyways. Um, and over the last year or so, I've been getting really into writing, both writing music and writing uh, plays and movies and things along that line. While at the same time, uh, getting really into uh, space and the science and physics behind it. And so through college, I would like to study astronomy and astrophysics, while at the same time keeping my artistic passions like um, well, writing, like a very, still a pretty prevalent part of my life. Um, but anyways, moving on to my project. Um, my project is called 3945, uh, direct, or a written, a written play in a directorial concept, though I might be paraphrasing that a little bit, but that's the general gist. And um, I came across the idea for this play while um, listening to the album A Crow Looked at Me by Mount Erie, which is also the same person who uh, uh, who does the microphones, or who's the main person behind the microphones. Lucky I have that there. Anyways, <laughs> um, and that album is uh, sort of an exploration on death and what it does to the people around it. And um, so I had, I had that running through my head as I came up with this uh, like apocalyptic scenario with all these people in a room who knew that they were going to die. And so I wondered, like, huh, like what interaction interactions would like come from that and so from that idea this play emerged and um now we're here <laughs> but from the process of making it was pretty straightforward i wrote it pretty quickly uh wasn't satisfied with it edited it for uh, four or five times it came uh, and then i was finally satisfied with it and then i made sure i knew what i wanted to set the lighting the costumes to look like wrote it down and then I was finished, which was, you know, I had no snags and challenges, which was very fortunate for me. It was pretty easy going for the most part. And um, like even with COVID, like I, everything was pretty much able to be done like on my laptop and a notebook. Uh, but my successes, which kind of tie into what I learned from this, was that it uh, really helped me finalize my writing style um, as something like unique while also meaning, being meaningful, and also also uh, helped me gain more confidence in my artistic abilities, and confidence overall, really. I'm Eric, and I plan to study mechanical engineering at the University of Virginia this fall. Um, so my honors project was a 25-page APA format research paper and an experiment on how uh, changing the front and rear shock pressure in my full suspension mountain bike would affect my heart rate when I was pedaling over a flat surface at a constant speed over a constant time and also a constant distance. Um, and my voted, my primary motivation for undertaking this project uh, is my passion for mountain biking um, and also my interests in science and engineering. Um, so for the first part of my process, I looked at previous research to see what had been done um, uh, and s to see how I needed to, what I needed to do for my experimentation. And then uh, after that, I actually went out and performed my experiment. Um, so I went out to a local park and set everything up and did the experiment there. Um, and then after that, I, I analyzed the results of my research to see how they fit in with what had already been done, uh, what I had researched about. Um, and then I figured out uh, after that, I put everything together into my final product, which was my paper. So I basically created a story of, of what, what the previous research had covered and how that integrated into my research, um, and what were the ramifications of my research because of that, uh, because of my results. And then after that, um, so some of the challenges I found while writing this paper and doing this experimentation was first uh, was the lack of similar research into this topic. There really isn't a whole lot because it's kind of a niche uh, niche field. Um, so really just finding that research was a little hard. I had to get access. Um, finding access was a little difficult, but after that, um, after that it wasn't too bad. I, I found enough sources. Um, and then another challenge I had was that I'd never really written a large paper like this before. It was a 25 page APA format paper. So I was kind of figuring out as I went. So that that slowed me down a little bit, but it was really a great experiment, experience. Um, 
And I think one of my best, greatest successes through this paper is actually how I integrated everything together. I think I created a, 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 a story throughout of my research and my experiment experimentation, and I think that went really well for me. Um, and personally, from this project, I have learned how the process of how large research papers are written, and I think this experience is will really be invaluable to me in my future academic and professional life. Hi, my name is Ezgi Stump and I'm a graduating senior at Jamestown High School. In the fall, I plan to attend the University of Virginia where I'm leaning towards majoring in global studies with a Middle East and South Asian focus, as well as economics with an international focus. My honors project is a 35 minute documentary called Stringed Quran, the place of music in the transmission of Alevi culture. So the Alevis are a historically marginalized ethno-religious minority indigenous to Anatolia or most of what is like modern Turkey. Their values are mainly passed down through a tradition of musical liturgy with a stringed instrument called the balama, which you can see over there, serving as the primary vessel of transmission. As a Turkish American whose mother comes from an Alevi family, I've always been surrounded by this liturgy. A scarcity of written sources and centuries of oppression have left Alevis extremely vulnerable to assimilation. So there are actually around 14 million Alevis in the world, but they still remain almost completely unrecognized. So I just wanted my honors project to be a resource for the Alevi community since most information on Alevis, especially in English, is inaccurate or largely inaccessible. I actually started my project in the summer of 2019. Um, I interviewed village locals in Daisim, the only majority Alevi province in Turkey. The first problem I faced was a language barrier because I'm fluent in Turkish, but Many older generations who are ethnically Kurdish or Zaza tended to switch into languages I didn't understand. So luckily, younger people in the village were there to translate. Another issue that I faced was not being able to go to Turkey last summer due to the pandemic. However, the popularization of Zoom opened up many interview opportunities that I might not have sought out otherwise, so it really ended up working out in the end. Um, along with interviewing one of the last remaining Alevi minstrels, my grandparents, Alevi leaders in Europe, Balma makers, and generations of Balma players. I also got to interview um, Ardal Eisenjan, who is probably the most famous Balma artist in the world and also my musical inspiration. So that was super cool. So throughout this project, I've become a lot more comfortable with doing field work as well as seeking out information when I'm interviewing people. Hi everyone, my name is Anne Ryan Garys. I'm a senior at Lafayette High School and I'm going to be going to the College of William & Mary to double major in marketing and French. So as you can tell, I love French. It's been a huge part of my life ever since seventh grade and that's a big part of what inspired me to do this honors project. For my honors project, I created a template for an elementary school musical called All Around the World where I wrote an original script, compiled songs from five different countries and created lesson plans for teachers to use in the future to teach their students about the five countries that this project highlights. Those five countries are Brazil, France, Morocco, China, and Mexico. I tried to choose five that um, really vary from each other, but also were quite representative of the different uh, international populations that we have around the world. Uh, the biggest challenge for me throughout this project was, of course, the things that we all expected, the time management, the research, um, putting everything together in the end, but of course my biggest roadblock was COVID, uh, as with everyone else's this year. I was really hoping to start volunteering in the classroom in September 2020 at Laurel Lane and actually put on the musical Come Spring 2021. Obviously due to different restrictions and keeping everyone safe, we are not able to do this. Uh, and I definitely missed out on that. I hope that maybe someone will be able to do it in the future, but in some ways it was a blessing in disguise because I was able to put way more time, or not way more time, but a lot more time into the research that I think I would have been able to do if I was splitting my time for this project in between volunteering in the classroom and completing the template for uh, for future teachers. And not only did I learn more about the five different countries I was highlighting, I learned how to research um, and present these countries in a more accurate light than I think I would have been able to do before. It's really important to educate um, yourself on cultural appropriation and to understand that 
you know, I did the research for this project, but I am not from any of these countries. I do not belong to any of their um, cultures or participate in a lot of the specific traditions that the script highlights. Um, and there's only so much Google can do, you know? You can research on the correct websites, you can use .org and .edu and everything, but it's not the same as actually um, being from the country, belonging to the culture, or even just visiting them, you know? Um, I, I, I had something to compare it to because I've been to France, which was one of the five countries, and I could tell how much that background knowledge of visiting there was helping me um, really find out which resources were more accurate and which ones weren't. So I tried to translate that as much as possible to researching the other four countries that I've not been to before, but it was definitely a challenge. Um, however, in the end, I am really happy that I took away from it what I did because I hope that um, learning about different cultures and traveling and incorporating them more into Americans' life is a part of my uh, future one day. I hope I continue to do that. And I think that these skills that I took from my honors project are going to help me so much with that. So thank you so much. Hi, I'm Gio Siriani and I'm studying environmental engineering in college. My honors project was painting pollution. My project consisted of 10 paintings, each done on a recycled or reused medium and each one had a unique art style or technique and focused on a local animal and a different type of pollution. What really sort of got me interested in this project was my uh, underlying interest in conservation and also my interest in sketching and painting, which I'd done as a hobby for a while. So before I even started researching painting or anything like that, I wanted to have a really good base knowledge of pollution and how it affects environments because that would be carried through to the rest of my project. So my first step was to uh, take part of an online course about it, and so that way I would have that really good base knowledge. My next step was to get my reference photos for each painting, so I needed 10 uh, for the 10 paintings, and so I went out to get them, and I actually went to several places. And when I was going out to get my reference photos, I didn't know which animals I was going to use yet, because I wanted to uh, get the photos first, so that way I would have a better representation of the animals in the local area. So once I had my reference photos, I could start my paintings. So the first step was to pick the animal, the pollution, the recycled medium, and the art style that I was going to use for each painting. And once I had that, I would make a concept or a sketch of what I wanted the finished painting to look like in my notebook. And then I would do a little bit of research into each animal that I was using, just so that I would have a little bit more base knowledge about that animal. And then I would do research into the art style that I was going to be using. And so I would do a few uh, paintings using that art style in my notebook just to kind of get a feel for it. And then I would do a few practices of the actual painting in my notebook as well, just to also kind of get a feel for how I could incorporate the art style into the painting. And then once I had done all that, I could finally do the actual painting on the recycled medium. So apart from everything I obviously learned about art and uh, pollution and local wildlife, I also learned a lot about time management from this project because Paintings aren't something that you can uh, throw together at the last minute, especially not when there's this much research and work behind them that you have to show. Um, so I really had to keep my deadline in mind and make sure that I was always on track to meeting that deadline. Um, so I learned a lot about time management. Hi, my name's Isabel O'Connor and I will be graduating from Lafayette High School this year. For my honors project, I was inspired to create an accessible and creative resource for elementary school environmental education. So I ended up collaborating with a third grade teacher from Matthew Whaley, Mrs. Lambert, and I distributed five detailed newsletters to her class. So to prove to you the accessibility of the online format, I will be showing you some of the work I did this year. These are some, not all, of the sections from newsletters I've created. This one is from May 2020, and it was on the topic of pollinators and their ecological importance. I had a lot of fun creating little insect cartoons for this edition, as well as instructing students on how to make their own pollinator garden, which you can see on this page. On the next page, there was a pollinator garden game.
The June 2020 newsletter that I made was all about engaging with the outdoors, particularly with family units since it was made during the middle of the pandemic. So I included a bunch of information about stargazing and solar systems. You can see the stargazing guide that I put together here. Then in the October 2020 newsletter, I took a local focus on the Chesapeake Bay discussing geography, aquatic ecosystems, and some of the problems that the bay is overcoming. This slide has the monthly word search, which I included in each edition. Apart from the newsletters that you just saw, I also created editions on air pollution and protecting forests. I'd like to thank Ms. Shaver, Ms. Schaffler, and Mrs. Lampert for helping me with this project. Hello, my name is Jacob Chu, and I am a senior at Jamestown High School. I will be enrolling in Haverford College in the fall, where I plan to major in a field that involves applied mathematics. I was originally interested in the Honors Project because many colleges encourage or even require significant undergraduate research, and many urge their students to publish. So I wanted to get a taste of that experience in high school. In looking for a topic, I focused on math first and worked with the teachers at Jamestown to consider possible topics in game theory and topology when I discovered a link between the golden mean and music. That intrigued me. I've been playing instrumental music since elementary school and played clarinet with the Jamestown marching band, symphonic band, and wind ensemble in high school. So the idea of combining music and math into a unified research topic seemed like a perfect fit. And thus, I continued looking into the golden mean as a topic. What I discovered, namely the unresolved debate about the link between Fibonacci sequences, on which the golden mean is based, and patterns in musical composition, opened my eyes to a research question that would be challenging. The result was fudging the Fibonacci, the intersection of mathematics and psychology in American popular musical compositions. It examines 144 popular songs spanning over four decades and uses the Fibonacci sequence, along with the golden mean, to analyze and see if there are patterns that made the songs popular. My research took me into the field of musical psychology as well to determine if these patterns are innate or intentionally used by the composers. There were two major challenges. First, because the research ultimately combined three areas, math, music, and psychology, and took me a while to get a handle on the method that would yield the type of data I needed for my interpretation. The second was acquiring the songs. Sheet music almost always needs to be purchased, so buying sheet music for 144 different songs was not an option. I solved this by using a book series that covered songs from the 1940s, 60s, 80s, and 2000s, then randomly drawing from them to get the best results possible. Once I established the method and acquired the sheet music, I spent a good chunk of my summer as a rising senior doing the research and writing. Hi, I'm Harris Agnew, and I spent the last three years working on an honors project where I modeled and 3D printed a replica of the over 325-year-old Fairfield Manor, the foundation of which you can see right here. I became inspired to pursue this project after I saw the Fairfield Foundation use drones just like this one to take pictures of the foundation of the manor and then turn them into a 3D model using a technique called photogrammetry. Keep watching and I'll show you what I did and how I did it. Back in 2018, I volunteered for a week at the Fairfield Foundation to help with their archeological dig of the Fairfield Manor. Fairfield's at the forefront of using photogrammetry and drones in archeology, span two technologies I have an interest in and wanted to learn more about. During my week volunteering, I spent hours digging in the dirt, surrounded by snakes, spiders, rats, basically everything you don't want crawling on you. But I also got the opportunity to fly and scan with the drone and learned a ton about photogrammetry and archeology. span After that one week with Fairfield, I was inspired to learn more about 3D modeling. So when the spring rolled around and I went back to school, I decided to take Mr. Knuckles' advanced drawing design class where I learned how to use CAD and Inventor. I then went back to the foundation and proposed to help them by recreating the entirety of the Fairfield Manor all in Autodesk Inventor. Now that you know how I started my project, I'll give you a tour of where I worked on it. Welcome to the headquarters of the Fairfield Foundation. This is where I spent my time for the past three years developing and creating the model of the Fairfield Manor. Here are the printers that I used to fabricate the 3D model. 
And this is the computer that I spent the majority of my time on creating this model. My sophomore year, I took Mr. Knuckles' advanced drawing design class. He taught me how to 3D model in Autodesk Inventor, the software I used to create this model. The entire model was built brick by brick. Even the smallest details like window muttons and wood rot and wood warping on the porch are some examples of, of small details that I worked on. I had very little resources to go off of. I had things like historic photographs and then of course the foundation that as it stands today. The second part of my project was actually 3D printing the entire model I had just designed. This is the first printer I worked with, the MakerBot Replicator Plus, and it came with a whole entire new set of issues. Uh, for example, the extruder would constantly get clogged and I would have to take this tube out, disassemble the extruder and put it back together. This plate wasn't heated so I'd have to wrap the entire enclosure in saran wrap so it would retain heat. You can even see here, this is one of the first models I created. The windows didn't print correctly because of some of those extruder errors. It was at a certain point in the model design process that I realized we'd probably need to upgrade given all the issues I'd run into here. That's when we raised some money and bought this, the Fusion 3 F410. With this printer, I would start a print on a Friday and then I would have to wait until Monday to figure out if my print was good. Just one of these sections here would take one to three days to print. So it was a lot of process of trial and error and figuring out what worked and what didn't. This is the result of all my hard work and the years I spent working on this project. There's dozens of sections of the house that I've had to print and reprint several times over the course of my time working with Fairfield. But ultimately, I'm really happy with the final result of this project. Over the course of the three years that I've spent working on this project, alongside the Fairfield Foundation, I've learned a tremendous amount. I've expanded my technical abilities in several different areas, discovered new interests, and I've been able to further pursue my passion for architecture, which I will now be studying for the next four years at the University of Virginia. Hi, my name is Lennon Newsom. I'm a part of the Honors Program at Jamestown. After graduating, I will be going to UVA and I plan on studying astrophysics. I did my honors project on the sampling of household sounds to make music. Um, I recorded household sounds such as my microwave, rubber bands, just random sounds like that. I edited them, turned them into instruments like drums and bass and piano and that kind of stuff. And I was able to use those sounds to then make five original songs and each one was a different musical genre. Uh, the genres that I used were EDM, reggae, folk, hip-hop, and jazz. I wanted to do this project because I'm very interested in music uh, production. I wanted to widen my range of skills by forcing myself to use sampled sounds instead of the digital instruments that I had been used to using. Um, I also wanted to widen my range of genres of music that I could create because I was used to making only hip-hop music but from this I was able to make uh, four other new genres and it was very interesting to learn about. Honestly one of the hardest parts of the honors program for me was just trying to figure out what I was going to do for my project. I had a lot of ideas. Um, I knew I wanted to do something with music but I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do and it took me until the second semester of my junior year to actually submit a proposal that got accepted. And after that point, it was really just me following the guidelines that the committee and I had agreed upon. Ultimately, I would say that completing my project felt very rewarding. I put a lot of time and effort into it and I was able to come out with a product that I really liked. It was very fun to work on, so I was very proud of what I had created. Through the honors program, I've learned a lot about time management and problem solving. Time management just to get the dates down to do everything that I needed to do to ensure that my project would be completed on time. Problem solving just through small problems that I experienced along the way for my project specifically. For me personally, it made it a lot easier to find motivation to work on the project and to be able to finish it on time just because I really enjoyed working on it. 
Hi, I'm Madison Homard and I'm part of this year's graduating class of 2021 as an honors candidate. Once I graduate, I'll be attending Virginia Tech in the fall of 2021 as a chemistry major. And once I graduate from Virginia Tech, I will most likely further my education into graduate school in hopes of becoming a forensic chemist in the FBI. For my honors project, I wrote a 25-page research paper including 15 pages of annotated bibliographies. The title of my paper was called A Different Type of Mind, and the reason I called it that is because I focused it on psychopaths, sociopaths, and antisocial personality disorder, and how it compares against the average human brain chemically, neurologically, behaviorally, and structurally. So for the reasonings behind why I chose this topic as my honors project is, first of all, I want to go into the FBI, um, specifically forensic chemistry as my career choice. And then second of all, when I took AP Psychology, I found all these topics that are within my paper very fascinating. As simple as it sounds, the writing and the research was pretty much the whole process of my project. And then when I finished a new page, it was like a sense of accomplishment every time. So when I first started writing my paper, I found myself lacking motivation. And when I started lacking motivation, I realized that it was because I had never really written a paper at this length before, and I did not know where to start. So, with that being said, I made daily goals and weekly goals in order to attain a sense of accomplishment so that I can keep myself motivated and on track to graduate with the Honors Diploma. Solvete omnes, my name is Olivia Garrett, and I'm a senior at Warhill High School. In the fall, I will be attending Sweetbriar College, studying economics in the classics. Because if you haven't already noticed by my Greek-themed attire, I love the classics. In fact, my honors project, Latin, the language of the living, is the culmination of my experience as a Latin student without a physical teacher, as well as the challenges that I have faced as a result. It comprises of a 34-page resource packet, a PowerPoint, a student brochure, and a parent brochure. One of the hardest things for me in completing this massive project was actually getting my project approved. Another challenge was actually compiling the information together in one place in an easy to understand manual. The easy part, the research, had already been done and was stored in my head. But wording it was harder than I thought it would be. Getting the information across to the reader was definitely more challenging because emotion and tone can get lost in translation. However, by the time I submitted it, I felt fairly confident in its understandability. Something I learned from the project would be standing up for what I believe in and also asserting myself as an authoritative figure on my project when talking to the committee. Talking in front of a room full of committee members with their attention focused solely on me was definitely nerve wracking. By the time I met with the committee for the third time to approve my project, I had had enough experience and courage to tell them exactly what the problem was and how my project was going to help fix it. Um, and so some advice I have for people who want to do this project, the honors project that is, is uh, make sure it is something that you absolutely want to do and that are super interested in it or else it's just going to be a slog like, oh, I don't want to do this. So make sure it's something that you want to do. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it and having an honors diploma. I did it solely for the play, to, to be totally honest. For anyone that's interested in doing an honors project, my advice would be choose something that you're passionate about. An honors project is a huge commitment, and if you're not interested or it's not fun for you to do the project, then it's going to be really hard to complete in time. And so just choose something that really sparks your interest and makes you want to do the project. It's a great opportunity to learn a lot about what interests you, and it can also be really fun. Completing the honors program is a great idea, though I would caution that it does take a lot of time and a lot of work, so you will need to budget that into your schedule. In the end, it will prepare you well for the future in terms of having some idea of what it will take to complete college-level research. My advice would be to start early and schedule a little bit of time out of each day to just chip away at it and eventually you will pull through. When you settle on your topic and have a handle on your methodology, dedication will then become the most important part of the process. As Thomas Edison said, genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. My advice to 
someone who may be wanting to do an honors project or just something like this in the future is um, to really just be passionate about your project and it'll go so much quicker you'll it'll be so much better if you're just passionate about it so um, that's my advice to anyone who's thinking about doing something like this the independent study block that Jamestown offers is very helpful in terms of time management and having me stick to a schedule that um, had specific dates in which I would complete pieces of my project. So my first piece of advice for future honors candidates, I would say definitely do the independent study course if you have room in your schedule. Um, the independent study course will allow you to carve out time out of your week on top of any other time you have to work on your honors project and that allows you to free up some time during your week or if you have a busy schedule it guarantees that you get time during your week to work on your honors project to stay on track. So on the topic of time management, uh, my second piece of advice is going to be about having an attainable timeline. What I mean by an attainable timeline is when you are creating your timeline for your project, make sure that you take into account what your life is going to look like in the future and then also what your schedule is going to look like. So if that means you have a really busy schedule, I would suggest doing a day-by-day -day layout in order to make sure that you're not cramming at the end of the week or you realize at the end of the week you forgot to do your work for your project. That will leave you stressed and unable to finish your honors project. Some advice that I have to give to students thinking about completing an honors project would be to do something that you're passionate about. Pick something that you can write about to a stranger for 30 minutes or more and go with that. If you see a problem in, in the community or it's something you've dealt with in your life, I can guarantee you that you can make a case for it as long as you're passionate about it. I'm passionate about Latin and I can go on and on for hours about the problems I've dealt with and how I'm working towards fixing them. And I hope that you can do the same. The project is a commitment like no other and it is very challenging, but trust me when I say that it pays off in the end. The efforts that you put into your project will pay off when you see your project helping someone else after you've finished. Lastly, I want to wish you good luck on your endeavors. The Honors Project is a life-changing experience, and when completed, you will be among a select few who have undertaken such an extensive and exhaustive project. Good luck and wale te omnes. I definitely recommend doing an honors project because it really holds you accountable to doing that one thing that you're really passionate about. So I just really want to thank Mr. Lampert and the entire honors project committee as well as everyone else that contributed to this project for making it possible. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's helped me along the way throughout this multi-year journey. Thank you to everybody at the Fairfield Foundation, especially Dave, Ashley, and Thane who assisted me with every step of the project. Thank you to Mr. Knuckles for teaching me how to 3D model and always being a source of encouragement. And thank you to the Honors Committee and Mr. Lampert for facilitating and allowing me to do this Honors Project in the first place. Thanks for watching.